Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time and I'm here for another this and that video and these kind of videos are just a vlog of many different things that are going on sometimes I'm answering questions sometimes I'm just showing you various projects maybe showing you some gifts I got from some of our subscribers to keep you informed on ongoing experiments or showing you some new experiments I'm getting started so let's get to the subjects of today and boy I tell you I am so glad it's fall I love the fall. I actually love every season. Every season has its benefits. But so I think every time we get into a new season and we can unwind from one and then get into the groove of another, it's always a good feeling. So we've got the wood stove going on a regular basis now. And it's really nice to be getting back to using that for drying my clothes and cooking and making coffee as well as heating the house. And then some of you know, if you saw one of my more recent videos, I've been having to use our off-grid laundry setup for uh, washing our clothes every day now because my washing machine died now yes patrick is working on it you know not only is that washing machine really old and it's hard to find parts and a lot of times if you do they're you previously used parts because they're not making new parts for it but uh his first fix didn't work that wasn't the problem but now he thinks he has located the problem but we did end up ordering a new washing machine anyway that one's still got a probably about another from the time I'm shooting this video, maybe another four weeks before it's here. So if he doesn't get it fixed on this, the washing machine fixed on this other part that he ordered, well, I'll be definitely well practiced on the off-grid setup, which I do enjoy doing it, but boy, it sure takes a chunk out of my day. And I gotta be thinking ahead. I gotta get them started early because they do take much longer to dry, especially when I'm hanging them up to dry. But get having a good hot fire going in the wood stove does definitely uh, help quite a bit as far as that goes. With the topic of fall in mind, you can see my last this and that video, I talked about some pumpkins that I had. You can see all of my pumpkins back there here. They actually all already turned orange, the color they should be. So when I showed some of these last week, especially this one where I actually took the uh, stem off, now it's fully orange. There's no green on it whatsoever. So again, this will be the first one I use because of the stem being broke off. Something about having that stem, leaving it on there, uh, makes them last longer. But I also managed, and these were kind of by accident, I managed to get a few, this one's still not done changing color, but a few of these Pippin acorn squash. I got three of them, one little tiny. And the reason I say it was an accident, I was intentionally trying to grow them this year, but uh, the one where these ones ended up, I thought they were, I thought it was a zucchini plant. So I planted it out with my zucchini and when it started vining, because zucchini doesn't typically vine, I thought that is not zucchini and once they started getting fruit on it I realized ah this acorn squash and it ended up being the only one I got the ones I tried to grow in my other area I like to grow the acorn squash and the pumpkins and spaghetti squash the only thing I got were the little pumpkins this year crazy but anyway so there's that talked about that in the last video but I just wanted you to see how the colors were coming along just in that little bit of time so it didn't take near as long as I remembered it for them to full turn fully orange so right here i have a grape leaf sitting here because i want to remember to talk about this so i'm right now in the middle of harvesting grapes between the rainstorms so my grapevines went far more berserk this year than they ever have it seems like the more i cut them back each year the more berserk they go the next year and so what i'm having to do i mean it's just it's really my deck has been like a jungle and i'll put a picture right here this picture is showing after i hacked back quite a bit you can see a lot of the grapevines laying there on the deck and then you can see a couple of colanders full of grapes and that's what i started with yesterday and today it's raining so i probably won't be out there harvesting we still have more grapes that aren't ripe yet anyway but i try to get the ripe ones off of there as soon as i can because the little birds love to eat those and when we get raccoons coming around they like to eat them too and so I try to get those off of there as soon as possible. But anyway, the grapevines are so thick, the only way I can even get to the grapes is to start hacking them back. Well, I got to cut them back anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. We have very tart grapes. Uh, one of them is a little sweeter than the other. The Niagara Whites are the ones that take longer to ripen, and they also tend to be more tart. The Amber Grapes, which color-wise, they don't look amber. They still look green, but they are um, they have a little sweeter flavor and a more oval shape. Those are the ones that get ripe first, and I actually prefer those. 
So uh, anyway, mo mostly those are what I harvested, but uh, I brought this in because I wanted to talk a little bit about the leaves. Now somebody saw the photo that I just showed you on, that I shared it over on Facebook and were asking, what do I do with the grape leaves? Do I use them? Well, this year I'm not doing anything with them. And in fact, I didn't do anything with them last year other than compost. And the, the reason why is because I still have tons of grape leaves dehydrated up and frozen in our food storage. So the frozen ones are for the purpose of making dolmas, the Greek rolls with the meat and the rice. But when you're making those rolls, you don't want to use an older leaf like this, like any of the leaves out there right now. There's some younger ones, but as with a lot of plants, I see this with beans and a lot of other things, the ones that are still coming on fresh late in the season, they tend to be very tough even if you pick them young. Now that I'm just getting around to hacking all that back, these are just gonna go to compost. But, and, and I have jars and jars of dehydrated grape leaves. So even the older ones, yes, you can dehydrate them up, but you don't wanna pick them too old or when they start changing color because they're gonna lose a lot of their nutrient value. Now about three years ago or so, so it's gonna be a dark video and probably not as well edited as my newer ones, but I did do a video of the uses and benefits of grape leaves. So I'll go ahead and link to that in the description box down below. So if you got some grape leaves and you wanna start using them for something, you know, that should give you some ideas. Now, I don't remember if I mentioned in that video about me using them to make the Greek rolls, the dolmas, but uh, what I've done, they're best used fresh or you can freeze them. So I just took the whole leaves and stuck them in, at the time it was food saver bags, but now I, if I was gonna do it again now, I would use just little pint jars and then roll them up and stick them in there and freeze them. That's gonna be the best way to, to preserve them for using for making those if you're interested. And I think I did mention um, mention you can add these to your fermented foods, your pickles and whatnot to help keep those things fresh. All right, so moving on to some other fall related things. So my beans have been drying a little bit at a time. So as they start, once they, I know they're, they're done growing and I've got space in the greenhouse, what I do is I, I take the, I grab them in clusters and then I hang them in the greenhouse where they can finish drying because here you don't want to leave them out side because we have such heavy rains in the fall that the bean on the inside could end up rotting so I try to get them into the greenhouse as soon as I can and then they dry very nicely in there and then once they get to a certain point where they're nice where the outside is nice and crisp I bring those in I shell them and I like to put them in these little wicker paper plate holders and then let them finish make, to make sure they finish drying completely. And I just set it on my uh, rack that I use for dehydrating and all kinds of stuff that we that Patrick built for me. And I have a video about that rack, my dehydrator rack. It gets used a lot through the year, but especially through fall, winter, and spring. And so right now it's holding a lot of seeds. And some of the bigger seeds like peas and beans like this, I like to put in these. And then I'll transfer a lot of them over to the bags. Now people have asked me a lot what kind of beans these are. These are runner beans. I actually have three different varieties of runner beans and I am selling them now in the store, but it's just, they're advertised as Scarlet Runner because that's mostly what they are. But if you were to buy some of those beans, you might get a Sunset Runner in there, which the only difference between the Sunset and the Scarlet is the color of the bean itself varies just a little bit and the it's mostly the color of the flowers so the sunset runner has the nice peach colored flowers where the scarlet runner has the deep orange or very bright red uh, flowers on it now the other one that's in here would be the barnside sweet and i think i saw a couple usually you can uh, tell those because they're the real big ones. The only difference between those and the Scarlet Runner, the color is all the same, they just get a lot bigger. The plant gets bigger, the beans get bigger, the pods get bigger, but uh, they're they're all virtually the same. So I am selling these on, these on my store, but I did do a video, I think it was last year or the year before, about them and why I like them so much. So I'm not gonna go into all that here, and I will go ahead and link to that in the description box down below. But I also put a description, if you go over to our store and you're interested in buying them, I, I did put uh, quite a bit of information and detail about them and uh, 
their uses. Okay, so now let's move on to some other interesting things. Somebody had found my old video on the peppermint patties. That one's a few years old too. So I have my own recipe on peppermint patties. I just made it up. I didn't follow anybody's recipe for it or take the ideas. I just made it up as with all of my chocolate recipes. Now, a lot of those kind of recipes like the peppermint patty one, the uh, raspberry cream chocolate, those ones all have like a white chocolate base to it that might have something else added to it. Now, typically when you're making a white chocolate, it involves using a powdered milk. And so somebody came in and watched the that video and asked if there was something they could use in place of the powdered dairy milk. So I got to look it around. My first thought was, well, why not just use the dried pulp from making coconut milk? And I still think that would be a good option, but you'd want to get it very, very powdery. So I did some looking around and I found two different types of non-dairy powdered milks. And one was the coconut milk and the other one was the cashew milk. Now, the problem with the coconut milk, and I couldn't find any coconut milk that didn't have the, what's it called, maltodextrin in it. However, the difference between that and the maltodextrin you find in other types of things, and it's used as a thickener is what it's for, is the one in all the organic coconut milks I found, the powdered ones, is actually made from organic tapioca, which is going to be a lot safer for you. Now, malodextrin, you know, when they isolate it, it still has its own issues. So I recommend if you're concerned about it, look into it. There's good and bad to it, like so many food additives that are used for thickeners. So if you're thinking about the coconut milk, I just recommend looking into that. It was one of those borderline ingredients, but considering that it is made from tapioca and not corn, especially GMO corn, you know, this is totally non-GMO and organic, I, I still think it's going to be the safer bet if you're trying to look for something that's non-dairy, that's a powder, for to use in things where you need a powdered milk of sorts and chocolate being one of them, or white chocolate for that matter. But the cashew milk, that one didn't have any of that in it. I only found one brand that made the cashew milk and if you're interested in checking either of those out, I'll link to this down below. I really like the flavor of this, but I'll also link to the cashew milk if you want to check it out. It was just cashews and inulin, which is also used as kind of a basically a non-clumping agent, but inulin is also a prebiotic. So check that out. That might be the better choice for you if you think you might have a problem with the maltodextrin that is in the coconut milk. So again, just some dairy-free options. I still think if that if it really came right down to it, if you took the nut pulps after you've made your different nut milks, if you could find a way to get it powdered up very, very fine. Um, I, I can powder it up pretty good using a coffee grinder or even my blender, but if you have an even better way to get it very fine, it might be a good substitute. I would even just try it anyway, and that way you know exactly what's in it. You're not having any additives that you could possibly have problems with. So again, I, as a lot of you know, I have tons of videos on how to make your own vegan milks, you know, dairy-free milks, dairy-free gravies, dairy-free cheeses, and all of these are with using nuts that you just take the raw nut and you just do it yourself. No additives unless you want to add something to it. Unlike a lot of the dairy-free milks that you buy in the boxes at the store, a lot of those have some ingredients that could be a little unsavory. Some people are gonna have digestive issues with those. So learning how to make your own nut milk, there's so much you can do with both the milk and the pulp once you've got it made. So I'll put that whole playlist down below. But anyway, I just wanted to try this out for the sake of those people that were interested. Maybe you wanna stock up on a powdered milk to put in storage for your non-dairy things. I still recommend just stocking up on nuts and coconut so you can just make your milk fresh. But if someone who's looking for a powdered version, I still think it could be a good option. Now, along with that, another one, is, that I've been trying out are the tiger nuts. Now I did try to grow some this year and I got a few, they just didn't do great. The ones that did best I actually have in a pot out on my front deck and I'm not digging those up. I'm just leaving the ones that are in there in there. But tiger nuts are not at all a nut. 
they are little tubers and you can see in this picture I'll put right here tiger nuts also known as chufa they make a really good dairy-free milk now someone asked the question well if they're a tuber wouldn't that mean they're kind of starchy well they're not starchy but yes they do have carbohydrates in them but I wouldn't consider them starchy like you would a potato or a Jerusalem artichoke or a sweet potato or anything like that they're definitely more chewy and they seem more like a nut to me and I think that's why they have the name they have a, they have a very nutty flavor but they taste more similar to coconut than anything and very high in fiber and very good for your digestive system if you're trying to do a very low carb diet this might not be the choice but look into them it might still be a good option for at least making the milk now what I did was I wanted to just kind of play with them a little bit before I got serious about trying to grow them again next year since I didn't get enough to do much this year and I really like these I would say they made the best tasting nut milk yet well I don't know about the best but one of my favorites it's definitely seemed more rich than I when I've made coconut milk from just non-sweetened coconut the pulp has definitely got a different consistency uh, again it has a coconut flavor but it also has a natural sweet flavor to it which was really surprising now you can eat these right out of the package they tend to be a little uh, chewier because <laughs> they're they're very they have so much fiber in them that they're very chewy but if you soak them they get they're a little easier to chew up and I like them either way so just like anything when you go to make a milk out of it it's always best to soak it first and it's so it's usually healthier for you anyway because just like any kind of nut even though this isn't a nut but like any kind of nut this does have some of those things that you want to break down possibly sprout it or even roast it if you have problems with digestion but here was the other thing I thought was really cool about the pulp it was a lot easier to get pretty much all of the liquid out just squeezing it by hand there's something about the consistency of the pulp i think it's because of the very fibrous consistency of it and so by the time i i got done squeezing it out i opened up the cheesecloth and i got a little video clip right here and you can see me running my fingers through it it was almost fully dry just squeezing it out so throwing it on the dehydrator or, or drying it next to the wood stove was just very quick in fact I didn't really even do that that for that long because I did use it the very next day in making some pancakes now the drawback to the pulp from that is that it does tend to be a little um, more chewy like the tiger nut itself than the pulps that you're gonna get from your other nuts so whatever you use it in you're going to want to break it up with some other things or see if you can find a way because I didn't bother trying to process it in my coffee grinder like I do when I'm making other nut flours I just used it immediately maybe if I would have tried processing it first and then make the pancakes it would have been had less of that chewiness but the pancakes still were good I didn't actually mind that chewiness in the pancakes I did go ahead and do kind of a add a little bit of flour to it though to break that up so it wasn't just the tiger nut pulp that I was using in there so I like to play around and experiment with different things and I do also by the way have a video out a video recipe where I use only my homemade nut flours for making pancakes no gluten totally gluten free so I'll link to that video down below for those of you who are gluten free and like to see how I did that and they turn out really good I just wanted to mention a few little things so I got these uh, in the mail the other day we, we don't get down to the post office very often so sometimes these things can sit down there for a while but I really I'm just really loving this little card that Julie sent me she made this little card it's very 3d and just very well done and look at the little honey pot it's so cute <laughs> anyway she made these jar covers and i'm loving these things she was really concerned after she'd made a bunch of them and then she realized i'm not really a pink person but that's okay i'm talking about like i don't wear a lot of pink that doesn't mean i hate pink it's just it's just not really my color for wearing but she made all these great jar covers so these can you know these can be used for just looking cute like you know you just take your jar and you can put it over like that just to, for a decorative thing or for making your vinegar so something like this I wouldn't have to worry about putting a rubber band over it I you can see I've got a vinegar back here this should be done now and that's one of my hair vinegars back there it's the this uh 
got roses and nasturtiums in it. But anyway, I can just take this and slip it over the jar. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm kind of concerned about that because these are so cute and sometimes the vinegar can stain your cloth. So we'll see. But anyway, she made me a whole bunch of these things. This one's got bees on it, but I love them. So Julie, thank you for these. I think they're beautiful and just and adorable and I really like them and no I don't mind that some of them are pink that's just totally cool so and she even made this cute little bag for me to keep them in so thank you again for that and then a, a lady that had recently ordered a chamber from us our vacuum chamber I'm going to talk about that for just a minute she also made this little bookmark and you can see it's all hand crocheted now a lot of you know that I crochet and I, I crochet a lot but one thing I do not like to crochet is anything that's fine like this. I don't like working with the threading or floss as some people call it. So I, this is not my favorite thing to do. I usually like to just stick with uh, bigger yarns and doing stuff like making baby hats and the sweater that I'm currently making right now for a little baby Jackson. And so, and by the way, in case you missed it, yes our grandbaby was born a little boy his name is jackson ryan ryan is middle his is his middle name after his dad and ryan's middle name is patrick after his dad so it's kind of cool but uh, and here's a picture of me holding little jackson and then here's a picture of patrick holding little jackson and we're just totally enamored with this little guy so anyway i had made him a fox hat and before he was born but i really wanted to make a matching sweater but i wanted to wait until we found out if it was a boy or a girl now that he's born i know exactly the sweater i'm making so that's that's what's going on now but anyway that's the kind of stuff i really like to do afghans and and sweaters for myself and just tons of crochet stuff i don't like working with fine stuff it's just i don't like working with teeny tiny hooks and i don't like working with little fine things like this so this makes this even more special anyway that's really it for the this and that i did want to just say in passing i want to mention the chambers only in the sake that i'm going to be shooting another update video another q a video some of the common issues that people are having so that hopefully we can get that all straightened out so if any of you have bought the chamber and you're trying to figure out why can't i get it to work so i'll make sure to put the link to that in the description box down below so if you're having problems Go check out that link and hopefully I'll have all your questions answered on how to make sure that you get that chamber working for you. And by the way, for those interested in the chamber, we're, we're still making them and getting them out there. We're able to kind of get a little farther ahead now that the main rush on them has slowed down. So if you go check out our store, which is always linked, the first link in the description box down below, you may be able to find one. Two different sizes, so make sure you read carefully the description on the item or watch the videos that i put out so you can understand the differences including the one i'm putting down below before you buy okay well i hope you enjoyed my this and that and don't forget to check out some of the other things down below thanks for watching take care and god bless